So the C is completed. And I haven't worried about the odd thing going down at angles. Most of it is on a horizontal. And just these odd little lines that want to go at an angle is fine. Try to use the very edge of a piece of pastel so you get some thin marks going on it. Now we're going to move on to this cliff. And I'm going to use my very dark navy blue to begin. It's got a little knobble by there. Put that in. And I'm going to just a little bit think about the direction of the rock. Get a bit of dark in to begin. The dark will also separate it from the light land at the front. So there's not going to be that much dark because we want it to go off in the distance. Going back to my nice warm blue now, and I'm coming across here and I'm going to fill in the background cliff and then I'm going to choose how much of this to fill in with blue. You see that dark is now fading away and becoming a shadow. Some of this middle blue in there. And I'm going to change to my, oh, I think my nice turquoise. I just have to take the paper off my pastel so I can block in with it. I'm using the side of the pastel most of the time now rather than the tip to do these. And if you're using the side of the pastel like this, then you must peel it. Usually the first thing I do with pastels is peel them and get rid of the paper, which unfortunately gets rid of the thing saying what colour they are. But I can't use them in a great big long pastel. Bit of that colour. Bit of my paler blue. And big long sweeps of pastel which sort of describe the direction of the clip. Then I'm going to break it up with some of this brownie red and at this time I'm using the tip and getting some lines in as well. Lines going along the cliffs and the side of the pastel, making pieces, chunks. And I'm going into my yellow ochre. I think it was a grey 23 this colour. Some of it is lines, some of it is the edge of the pastel. And I'm almost making like the cuts through the rocks and the feel of the cliff in the background. Now I actually think that it wants to come out just a little bit further there. And at the same time I'm going to bring in just a little bit of the beach. A rock, shaly beach. Coming across here I'm going to start with that dark. I want to see bits of water through it, where the water is flooding through, through all the pebbles and the stones. I can't think of the words. That's okay. A bit of the other colours on it. Lock a bit of it in. Let's try not to be too delicate with it. A bit of this pale blue. Love the yellow ochre. We'll get some of that on it. You see, just because the, the strokes are going sideways, you're now describing a flat surface. When the strokes went up, you were describing the rocks. It's actually really easy to get direction in pastels. Take a couple of odd ones out so it's not such an even line. And I'm going to finish that little bit of seed by taking some of the sea back in through the rocks. And a little bit around the, the bottom of the rocks here and there. Get some waves splashing through. There we are and there's your background cliff and a little bit of pebbly beach. Right, so we've got the sea, we've got the cliff, we've got the sky. Let's get this lovely detail at the front. I'm going to begin with the path. And my marks for the path are going to go horizontally, the same as they did for the sea, because it's flat. The path is flat. So if you make your marks horizontal, it'll work. And I'm starting with this lovely yellow ochre colour. 
And on top of that, I'm going to put some of this blue, the pale blue this one is. And I always go out just a little bit further here and there because we don't want the edges of a motorway. We want a nice rough little path. And a little bit of this dark brown here and there, perhaps this red, dark red, reddy brown. No idea what the colour's called. And a little bit of white. I believe there were some little patches of water on the path, as you can see here. We'll put them in with a white. There we are, that's our path done. Maybe I should be a little stronger with the blue. Ah, we'll see afterwards. Now I'm coming to the bank here, and I'm going to begin with my very, very dark navy blue. And I'm thinking grasses, but big chunky grasses. Get your shapes in. The odd little long grass. And I'm trying not to be too too detailed. It wants to be chunky. It's a chunky picture. Nice chunky dark. So let's make a dark corner down here. All my pictures I like a dark corner. Always going uppy downy thinking about grasses. Make a dark corner and on the other side we'll take some darks up. Again, thinking about grasses. Get some darks going on through there. Nice big chunky darks. And here and there when you get to the edge you can do a little bit of a longer piece of grass. Not too much. Let's not go overboard with it. So we've got some darks going through. And again, I'm going to create a dark corner down here. Keep it really loose and rough. And little pieces of dark. But everything wants to suggest the texture of grasses. So there's the path put on and there's the darks put on. The next step is adding all the rest of the colour to the grasses. Right, so we've got our darks on. Let's take a little look at our picture and just go back a little on what we were talking about where we're going to put some excitement in it and some colour in it. So these rocks which are actually grey with a bit of green have now turned into yellow and ochre and dark red. The sea has got beautiful colours in it. Let's do the same thing on the banks at the front. We've got some dark, so I'm going into my dark reddy brown now. And I'm just creating grasses going over the edges. Try to be a little a little bit random. So sometimes you could just have some spots outside. Bring your colour through. You don't have to go everywhere. All the way down to the path. Let some of it overlap the path. Get some of this dark colour on there. Overlap some of the black. Do some of the gaps. So you're being again completely random with your colours. And we go back to the other side, make sure you overlap the path so we can see it goes around the corner. Get some of this through, some little bits overlapping the top of the mountain there. Mountain? Bank, it's not a mountain. Bring some of these dark browns down here. Just enjoying the colours. A little bit of overlapping, a bit of overlapping down here. Then I'm going to change to my, oh, what am I going to use, what am I going to use? My green, I've got a bright green as well. Let's bring this into play. Let's get some of this in here. I don't want a massive amount. And sometimes I'm doing it on the side of the pastel, which gives us this lovely smudginess. Sometimes I'm doing it on the tip of the pastel, which will give us lovely, lovely sharp edges and sharp points. I'm sorry, when I'm painting, my words go out the window a little bit. Let's put a bit over this side, a bit on the side, make it nice and smudgy, and a bit on the edge, make it sharper. Fill in across this side. And I'm also going to add a bit of this yellow ochre, wonderful colour, 
Again, I think it was grey 23, not absolutely certain. Anything you've got that are roughly these colours is fine. And of course, they can be roughly any other colours, whatever you fancy using, because none of this is in the photograph. So remember, it's up to you. Some of it's going on on the side, some of it's going on using the tip. And let's get into putting in some really long, thin shapes as we're doing it. It's really going to break it up. It's going to make it a little bit exciting. Try to find a thin edge to your pastel. And if you can't do it, there's nothing wrong with sharpening a pastel. Use a bit of a craft knife. And if you've got any of those slightly cheaper pastels, they're actually really good for putting in heavy mark, uh, putting in these sharp little marks. I'm going to use some of my blue to match this up to here. Some of my blues going in. And I think actually over here I want a bit more ochre. Fill it up a little. That's nice. And maybe a tad more green. Get some, oh, that's nice. Get some of those thin marks in as well. And I'm going to get just a little bit of this green, just a mark or two, onto that headland in the distance. To finish it, I'm going to use a couple of real sharp dots of that turquoise and a bit over here. And I'm going to go back to my white. You've really got to hit the board to do this. You can feel the board. And maybe a couple more of these lines skinny lines with the edge of the pastel and there we are nice little coastal path oh I want a bit of white up there I think and that's just about done feel free to play around with it a little bit if you wish and we've got a really nice loose and free coastal path painting enjoy Once you've finished your picture, it's going to be quite powdery because we've put thick pastel on it. So I use this fixative at the end if I'm going to put it in a frame. The proper fixative is the best pastel fixative. Some people use hairspray. I wouldn't recommend it, but if you're completely stuck, you could. Hold it about 18 inches away. Spray until the paper starts to darken. That was about three seconds and that's enough. If you keep spraying your pastels will all melt and liquefy but that will keep it a little bit from smudging. It won't completely protect it but it will help. 